Hey everybody, Rich at RM Auto Diag and today we've got a Suzuki Swift with engine light on and traction control. Right, so as I said, engine light on, traction control light on. I have done a code scan. Uh, so I suppose the main one I'm going to concentrate on first is this engine one. We've got a lost comms with steering angle and something we don't know. Um, customer said that they did clear the codes themselves. There was a DPF pressure sensor code in here as well. But this one does not clear, and that's the one we've got to look for. Uh, obviously, it says current there. Now, usually, sensor reference when I see something like that, we've lost the 5 volt feed to something, or something shorting on that 5 volt feed and pulling down a load of sensors. So, maybe the first place we should look is we should check some 5 volt feeds about the place. Probably should try and find the um, DPF pressure sensor first as well and check that seeing as there was a code might not be anything to do with it but you never know don't know if we can get any live data <laughs> see if it is actually working or not so data have we got Differential pressure, there we go. Something's happening, you see a fluctuation there, started up. Sorry, it's quite bright today, not good for camera work. Alright, well, that seems to work. There's a bit of stumbling. Right. Codes. Still got that as a current code. Uh, switch this off. And let's see if we can verify that it won't clear. Clear code. Codes cleared. Codes. Straight back. Right, let's go into the bonnet. Let's get a multimeter out and see if we can work out which circuit is C. I, I doubt we're ever going to find that. I don't have much in the way of manufacturer's data for this. Um, but uh, let's see if we can work this out. Right, so under the bonnet we've got manifold pressure sensor, we've got camshaft sensor down the front here, their potentials for 5 volts, and the pressure pipes come out of here. And they go round to the sensor, which is just down here. See that. That's decent. I don't know if it's supposed to be sat like that. It almost looks like the bracket's bent over a fair bit. I suspect it should have been straight. Um, what I did see when I've opened the bonnet is this clip here. I guess that's been taken out. So something's moved around here to do something at some point in its life. But maybe we should try see if I can get a multimeter back probed into some of these different sensors and make sure we got 5 volts at them uh, or maybe try disconnecting some and see if we can get rid of the code and go from there so I'll get set up for that so I'm not dropping the camera and then we'll come back on alright so the sun is shining really bright but we'll see if we can get this so it disconnected that uh, see if we can clear codes complete we still got it so what else have we got camshaft sensor I'm sure it probably wouldn't start very well if that was giving issues ah hang on hang on So we've just got a code for that now. Was that because I disconnected that? Was that because I disconnected that? Let's push this one back on. So that doesn't seem to have made a difference. But we don't have that other code now. 
don't know if you can see this very well. Code's cleared. So we just have that DPS filter. Let's come back inside. Right, so I disconnected it. We have got rid of that other one, but obviously we've gained this DPF pressure sensor one. Um, let me just start it. Alright, so we've still got our management light. Do we still have this code coming back? Now, it wouldn't clear before. See, we've just got that code, the one code now. So we used to have that one. If we go in there, back into engine. When it thinks about it. So we've just got that. So if I switch off, and then we'll go plug that sensor back in now. Down in here. So let's plug back in, we'll see if that reference code's come back. sensor reference voltage C so we're back again so I think we are on the right lines with this DPF pressure sensor let's um I am going to put a multimeter in it now and we'll see what that voltage is doing just out of interest um, I guess it's obviously upsetting something all right so we are connected into the sensor we got five volts on one wire likely an earth we've got another five volts yeah I would imagine that's probably the feed it's a little bit higher than the than that one so you should swap this one over make sure that's an earth 12 good enough for me Right, so is this feed, which is a uh, brown and yellow? That looks like. Get this in here, one-handed. I can't. Definitely can't. Come on. Five, five, six. I'll hold it in there a minute. Right, five, five, six, and then I'll push it on. Three, three hundred millivolts. And swap it into this one. Maybe this one's the feed. The other one dropped, but that might be our short. So we've got five volts on this one. Again, we'll plug it in. Three. So, well, one of those should stay at five. So we've got an issue there. Don't know which. One of them should stay at five. So we definitely have a problem with this sensor, I believe. Let's see if we can maybe get this one, because it was reading, wasn't it? I was reading something on this bottom one. So what are we, about 400 millivolts. Let's go start it up. Right, so we're running again. Let's see if that's 400 millivolts has gone higher. Yeah, 
has gone up a bit. So I reckon that might be our signal wire on the top one, which is the yellow and red. I reckon it's supposed to be a 5 volt feed, but it's not. I reckon that's our issue there. So I'm going to get a new sensor on for that and we'll retest and see what it does. Right, so here we are next day. I've got another sensor just plugged in. It's not connected to any of the pipes or anything. We've got the multimeter on it. Now that yellow and red was the one that when we plugged it in it went down to about three and a half volts from five when it was plugged in. And what was it, the brown and yellow opposite had about 400 millivolts on it. So, if we turn the ignition on, I'm happy with that. So we've got five volts there, which is good. Not three and a half, so that's obviously the one that's getting pulled down. And there we go, we've got half a volt there, 500 millivolts on the other one. So that's a good sign. So, right, let's go and have a look on the tool. Maybe start it up. So, I have got it plugged in, ready to go, just to speed up the video. If we start it up, all right, so instantly we've got our crash control lights gone. Still got an engine light on. Let's see what it says. Can we get it good enough? Doesn't look too bad, I don't think. Sorry, there's a lot of glare at the moment. It's quite nice outside. Alright, codes. So there's that reference. So will that clear now? Clear codes. We're gone. So we have nothing. And what happens when we start it? We have nothing again. So I reckon that one's resolved. Obviously we've got to put the pipes on. We'll just start it a few times. So we've got no engine management light. No codes. That sorted out that uh, group C whatever it was. Happy days, new sensor fitted. I'll just clear that up in a bit and get some pipes on it and we are done. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one.